I'm going to be describing um, those different um, phenomenon, partials and double bubble, in this weighted normal called isoparametric problem, but I'll have to explain to you where all these terms come from. Um, so they come actually from a, what's called a tri-block copolymer, the model. And so I'll first start with a di-block copolymer. Uh, so what is a di-block copolymer? So it is a polymer which is composed of two uh, phases, phase A and phase B, which are glued together. And they have the property that the same type attract, but opposite type repel, but they are stuck together. So they cannot simply separate. And so various patterns are expected, and the pattern depends very much on the volume fraction of each uh, <coughs> A or with respect to phase B, and also on the physical parameter, which is the interaction between uh, phase A and phase B. So uh, you see on the left here, uh, in the middle, it's when the volume fraction is the same, so you get the lamellar type pattern, but if one volume fraction is much smaller than the other, then you expect spherical patterns, and I have a picture on a bit more zoom in in the right for the same phenomenon. And so to model this um, mathematically, we consider uh, torus in dimension two or three, we consider periodic configuration, and we associate to the phases a BV uh, function, a phase function, which uh, is either zero or one, depending on the, uh, so if you are pure A phase, you associate two equal one, for example, and the pure B phase, you equal zero. So, um, and then this is the energy that we use to understand this phenomenon. There is a perimeter <coughs> uh, of the boundary of the phase A plus a non-local term due to this uh, uh, interaction between the, the phases. The fact that they are glued together, but they are uh, determined um, where, uh, so G is just a zoom point. And so we are in the, in the torus in the periodic setting, and uh, um, the perimeter term uh, is the local term is attractive, so it's favors uh, nice balls, for those or disc, uh, balls, or, or depending on the mass fraction, sorry, <laughs> small mass fraction equals the ball. <coughs> uh, well, the non-local term is going to want fragmentation. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we're going to fix the volume fraction, and depending on this mass, uh, you will get different morphology, as in the picture that I saw over here. So um, this energy um, kind of uh, was very much revived. So in the case where you're not looking at the torus, but RD, this is your famous Gamov's liquid drop model that was introduced in the 1930s to understand nuclei. Okay, so I was just uh, saying that there is an extensive literature on the, on the, it's the Gamow's liquid drop model, which was, as I said, revived by um, a flexibility, where they were actually studying di-block copolymers, by the way, and also Kumpfer. <coughs> and uh, that's something about 2010, so there was a huge uh, literature that probably left as a result of that this question. But um, I'm interested, uh, back to droplet, to, sorry, uh, di-block copolymer and tri-block copolymer. Um, Flexi and Poletti, they introduced the setup so that they could see the effect of the perimeter and the normal core term. In a setup, they call it the dro droplet phase, where um, you assume that one of the masses, one of the phases, is very, very small compared to the other phase. That's, um, so you kind of see the A phase as being very small in a dilute uh, region of B phase. And uh, so you assume that your mass is very small, uh, eta to the D for dimension, two or three dimensions. And in order to be able to see both the normal core term and the, normal, and the um, perimeter term, you have to impose some particular scaling. You impose the interaction term to be like eta minus three in dimension three and uh, eta squared log eta inverse of that in dimension <coughs> two, that's just related to the mean function that we are <coughs> using. So in that uh, dilute regime, um, what is observed, and I'm going to show you my first movie soon, is that uh, indeed the phase separates, you get a very small A phase, a tiny droplet form in kind of this dilute lattice of B phase. So that's my 
first movie that spoke with books. Yes. Uh, so, um, so Chong Wang is uh, both an analyst and numerical analyst. So she's the one. She takes random initial data, do some gradient flow on the energy, and and you see um, eventually what happens. <coughs> So what you observe is this binary, the A phase is uh, forming the small mass, so it's small little disk, and uh, and eventually you see what you expect. It's not proven that uh, they are located in this hexagonal type uh, matrix. So now what we're doing is tri-block copolymers, so that makes it of course more uh, complicated. Now we have three phases, A, B, and C. Again, they are bonded together, but uh, each phase repels the other. So you expect a uh, much more complicated, um, depending on your, again, volume fraction of each of the phases. You expect uh, all sorts of different uh, minima, or minima, and, uh, and um, we are trying to see if we can see some of these <laughs> mathematically. So again, the, so we're just doing an expand. I mean, not going to because we have three phases. We're going to have to introduce a vector order parameter for the three phases. We are working first in a, again periodic domain two or three dimension, and um, each represents these different masses. So the sum uh, we think of them as density must add to one. <coughs> to have, uh, as we've discussed before, depending on the masses of each of the phase, different phenomena, right? So we're going to be prescribing uh, some particular mass for each of the phases. The energy uh, is kind of the same idea as the local term, but now we have three phases. And, uh, and the non-local term exactly as before. So the first term is a perimeter term. Uh, okay, there is a subtlety now because we are, this model is actually coming as a, um, a kind of a gamma limit from a diffuse model where this first term, the perimeter term is really coming from a, oops, sorry. The repulsion term, uh, the phase zero does not appear. Or is no, because uh, the sum here is equal to one and this, uh, yes, exactly. Exactly. So the uh, zero is one minus two, one minus two, and this g remember is the is the mean zero, right? We are looking at the periodic setting. So um, you get everything just from your one and your two data. And uh, but the novelty is this uh, surface tension, okay? Because this is coming as of a limit, kind of a vector value, the familiar, if you're familiar. Um, uh, for the diffuse problem, you take um, in the limit and you get this uh, surface tension here in front of the perimeter between the phases. And um, the surface tension is really kind of a, um, it, I, I wrote it, good, I wrote it here. So this W is my potential, which will have three minima at the minimum of the corresponding to each of the phases. And uh, so this is um, your associated the degenerate uh, metric here, where sigma ij measures, in a sense, the length of the geodetic connecting the minima with double U potential. And so we think of it as a surface tension. Oh, I wrote here gamma limit of vector value. It's based on uh, Dr. Stenberg, Baldo, and Ren, and Wei for this specific setup here. And uh, again, because of this uh, structure, we have some relation between those surface tensions. To go between uh, i and j, you don't want between phase i and phase j, it is less than going between i and phase one and phase two and then phase two and phase three, or zero and one, one and two. So we have this uh, natural triangle inequality coming from the uh, setup of the problem. And the normal core term uh, is, uh, is just uh, in terms of the Green's function for that fashion and has now, uh, before we had just one interaction parameter, now we have a matrix uh, of uh, interaction strength depending on the interaction between the phases. Uh, yeah. In the sum that uh, the indices run from one to two, so it's only yes. 
So the, the zero phi is the it's, it's just given by, uh, it's, it's the fact that we have this constraint, u0 plus u1 plus u2 equal 1. And we're able to write everything in terms of just u1 and u2. So okay. think of the zero phase as kind of the external phase. Um, although, in, so we're going to see this much more clearly when we study the dilute regime. So think of zero as the external phase, one, two as the, as the, uh, Two smaller phases, and uh, and uh, we can always think of the external phase as the complement of the other two phases, and so uh, you end up with just this, this simple. Problem. What about the dynamics? So, I know we've compared just the moment to Sakarka. So we have not done the dynamics uh, at all, right? So you might expect uh, yes. So, but but you see, this is this is telemetry problem. The one I'm saying comes from this Candelier uh, problem in some limit. And uh, this term here is kind of a uh, continuous add addition. Sorry, who's alpha i and alpha j here? Alpha i, sorry, sigma i, j. Oh, this was, those were, yes, those are my minima. So I'm thinking of the minima, uh, the potential w, so I, I'm kind of, What's the kind of put it in, but should not have put it. It's kind of to explain to you where this um, the perimeter term here, the weighted perimeter term. So I did not explain. This is coming from a cannulier. We have a potential W which has minima, and those are actually the vector corresponding to the three phases. So it could be uh, one zero 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 one zero, depending on my phase. If it's full <coughs> phase one, you have one and then zeros, or zero and then one. So really, this potential is like your double, triple well potential, uh, and then you take your limit uh, in your can help you to get this to get this this problem. Okay, so alpha, there are vectors. There are vectors, yes. There are vectors that represent the minima of this represent the two pure, the three pure phases, the three pure phases. But it won't be important for the for what's coming up. What, what's important is this is the energy that we're going to be looking at, understanding minimizer of this. We have sigma ij again are really um, satisfy this relation here. You think of them as surface tension, really, of the perimeter on the interface. And gamma ij is the interaction between the phases. And we're going to consider a dilute configuration where two of the masses are very small uh, compared to the other mass. So, um, in order to understand the effect of each of the terms, the, this perimeter term, weighted perimeter, and the non-local term, let's first concentrate on this local term and try to understand what can we say about minimizer of this local term. And because I'm going to do really a some sort of a blow up like we discussed earlier with the eta being a small quantity that are on this scale, uh, it is, um, to understand this isoperimetric prime in all of R2 or R3, in all of Rd, because I'm going to do this scale. So I'm studying now what can we say about the minimizer of this weighted perimeter problem with given masses. M1, uh, phase one and phase two are given, and I want to find uh, what minimizes this perimeter problem with surface tension. So um, the case of equal surface tension, uh, you expect, well, the minimizer are double bubbles. This was studied by, uh, very much by Frank Morgan. And uh, so if the surface tension are the same, the minimi minimization problem gives you a bubble, double bubbles with equal angle at the triple junction. Um, this is done in two and three dimensions. So in two dimensions, this was done by undergraduate students. Always nice to see undergraduate students being so successful. <laughs> and in the case n equal three, it was done by uh, Morgan and co-authors to get this nice. So again, we have prescribed mass, right? The mass can be different. And at the junction, we have this orange wing maybe because the surface tension is equal. And in the case where the, we have strict inequality, uh, you end up with some uh, angle transition. Basically, you still have some, the minimizers still are circular arcs. They meet at triple junction, and they meet according to what's known as Young's law, or um, uh, recently, there's no, another name, I should maybe forgot. 
um, which basically says what you expect. And the sum of the surface tension times the normal at the, at the angle at the jump function, junction should add up to zero. So that prescribes which angle you expect depending on, the, on the, where you are on the face. So those are minimizer uh, in the case of um, strict inequality, in the case where they all are equal. And there's one last case which is actually very interesting in the case I call a degenerate triangle inequality, where the surface tension between phase zero and two <coughs> is equal to the surface tension between put it in the, the, the face, the, the other face. Uh, so um, in this case, um, there will be a region of phase uh, one passing through the, think of zero as the external region, two as uh, in, uh, one and two are the other smaller region. Uh, but it's prescribed mass right now. I'm not taking any limit. So, um, <coughs> so what we expect in this case, uh, what we find is that minimizer are cross shell. And the cross shell is just uh, you have uh, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an annular region. That's it, an annular region. The each mass is prescribed. The uh, this <coughs> omega two is mass m two, and the uh, annulus is uh, mass. Uh, M1, and uh, this is, I have everything here, that's why it's confusing. I'm talking about uh, these two last cases. Those are the two last cases I'm talking about. So this here, we are, what we're doing um, is precisely starting looking at the surface tensions and starting with uh, sigma 0, 2 being uh, smaller. So we are increasing sigma 0, 2. So, uh, so as we are increasing the surface tension between the phases, we see that one of the phase, uh, since it has a, um, you're trying to minimize, right, this weighted perimeter. So what we see is as we are, uh, sigma zero two is strictly less first, but then eventually gets closer and closer. The yellow, one of the phase is actually entering into the, so the phase two, let's say entering into phase one. And when eventually you want uh, the, those two phases to be uh, least, uh, have least amount of energy between that phase two and that phase zero, that's when you end up with either a tangential or an inner disk uh, to satisfy this uh, equality, this degenerate case. Uh, notice that uh, these two here and inner, any uh, yellow piece that moves inside will all satisfy the same perimeter, meaning same perimeter. So there is some degeneracy at this point about where this uh, yellow face uh, should be inside the, this red face. And, um, and this degeneracy, it turns out, we will see, is going to be resolved by a second order gamma convergence of the energy levels. And once you add the non-local term and you look at some gamma convergence, second order term, we'll see that it's going to uh, tell us uh, location actually of this inner disk. But you always had the smaller, could you also have the yellow one outside the red one? Yeah, so this is just a choice here that we made. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a choice that we made. This picture is such that the I mean, kind of, if you slowly increase this, you will end up with this or so, but um, uh, you've got the, because you've got the bigger mass for the red chunk. I mean, exactly. You know, I would, why it's outside. But, um, exactly, exactly, exactly. So you just change the role of the masses, and then you can change yellow and red, and, and all these colors related to the mass that I've chosen. Uh, so now we want to add a non-local term, and as we said, this leads to fragmentation. Uh, but um, still, we're going to see that for the in the dilute uh, regime, that's what we're looking at. Uh, the geometry, the local geometry of the minimizer will be indeed this this what we've been studying. So then we'll see. Um, there was some previous result uh, using Yapunov um, <coughs> type approach construct, in the case of equal surface tension, uh, to construct solutions <coughs> of the Euler-Lagrange equation. 
and they constructed uh, Ren and Wei uh, double bubbles. Uh, Ren and Wang Wen was a student of, uh, of Ren. Uh, so again, depending on your physical parameter, so now we're talking about the interaction strength between the uh, phases. You can see some double, some um, core shell, or you can even see if the if the interaction between the two phases, you know, yellow and is too big, they won't want to stick together. You won't neither a double bubble nor a core shell. They want to separate and get um, uh, tangled, tangled phases. So, yeah, I don't get pictures. So um, the question was: uh, so those are certainly critical points, but we don't know if they are. But don't have more. So the question that we asked for ourselves was, what do global minimizer in the 2D setting, this was already difficult enough, uh, look like for the dilute regime? Two phases, very small compared to the third one. So um, again, this is the full energy. This is weighted, weighted perimeter plus non-local. And we're assuming that two of the phases are very small compared to C. Uh, following the idea, again, complex scaling with first C-quality, we had also used this to understand some result on gamops in the case where you have the interaction at infinity. So I'm just mentioning this. So, um, so we are introducing this small length scale. That's the dropless radius. We can think of it as being very small. We are thinking of my two phases as clusters in that small region here. Uh, with very small, we have two dimension now, so small each of the two phases, like delta squared. And again, we associate to these clusters some BV function to work with, with uh, in, the, in, this, in the detailed version with given mass as before. And uh, again, uh, inspired by previous result, we have to choose the appropriate interaction coefficient in an appropriate scaling uh, so that we see both terms uh, in, the, uh, in the limit as eta continuum. So the, this is the rescaled energy. Uh, and this corresponds, this is related to the surface tension. It encodes the, the beta i's. So we're re re rewriting it as gradient of these uh, BV functions here to get the perimeter problem and the non-local term. And again, <coughs> lots of parameters. That will lead to lots of different, uh, sort of different phenomena. <coughs> By the way, there's lots of open columns, as you're going to see as well in this setting. And uh, we're looking at minimizer when eta tends to zero. So we have first a um, concentration phenomenon to understand what this um, regime looks like. So basically, this is the picture, maybe first, instead of uh, understanding the theorem, we see the picture when we uh, blow up around, the, remember those are small, right? Over it are squared, we blow up around them. Uh, and we, also, we have some prescribed masses. Um, we end up with, um, uh, as we're going to see, we end up with uh, looking at the geometry problem we were discussing earlier with fixed mass. So here I drew a, uh, a double, a double bubble here. And uh, so we are able to show that uh, when it happens to zero, we're working at minimizer, there exist some subsequences such that uh, the minimizer look like when we rescale to R2, looks like these clusters uh, centered at some finitely many points. We're able to show this finitely many a priori. This um, we, can, uh, we, can, we have to work <laughs> to show that this is finitely many with the end. And, and, um, and so this is the picture to, to keep. Uh, you would like to figure out a little bit where those locations should be, and that would be precisely in our uh, gamma limit. Uh, so the first order gamma limit. The blob. Uh, as I was saying, when you look at each of the components, we are back to uh, the, the local perimeter uh, problem we discussed with fixed given masses. So we understand, given some uh, prescribed masses, we understand depending on the parameters if we have double bubble or 
and we are able to rewrite the energy as from this decomposition <coughs> around each of these clusters, where uh, these terms are indeed for prescribed masses, are um, the clusters satisfy minimizing this uh, limiting function. Okay, so um, I rewrote it here. That's the limiting functional that uh, I will send when f happens to zero. And uh, we are wondering where is this non locality entering? And it is entering in this quadratic term. Because there's a quadratic term, you want uh, indeed some uh, the mass to uh, split, right? The, 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 you cannot have big uh, masses. And that's what pushes, pushes the, um, the splitting of all these uh, droplets. So this is this, but once we, and so we are obtaining these masses by looking at this minimization problem. Once we know the masses, we know what the shape looks like. So that's what I wrote, the decomposition is when uh, of mass m uh, is determined by minimization here. We're able to show, for example, that the mass can be too small. And, and uh, we can obtain this as a gamma convergence result assuming finite energy uh, configuration. And uh, it's the second order gamma convergence that would tell us um, um, we get some renormalized energy for the center of these droplets. And uh, uh, we expect the center <coughs> to minimize this, this term in the gamma convergence. And, uh, and so now the question is, once we know, uh, when we're looking at minimizer of these prescribed masses, uh, we would like to know, we, so we said, uh, we know the minimizer are the, for prescribed mass, what does this does? But there is still <laughs> an effect of the norm there, okay? So um, that we see in this minimization problem. So remember, this is the interaction between two phases. It's not the surface tension, but it's the interaction term in the norm local. Ah, and here I have another, another movie. So uh, the role of this uh, interaction term in the non-local term is the following. So we're assuming in this movie that the surface tension is the same, R equal to 1, so we are just double bubble, etc. Uh, right? We prefer double bubble, as we discussed. But if the... Um, the torsion, if you want, between phase one and two, small phases, one and two, is too big, yeah. and your mass is uh, large enough that there is um, there is some fragmentation. The minimizer we see will be only form of single bubbles of each of the phases. They cannot stick together, so they are pushed apart, and then they just have single bubbles. And uh, notice that here in this, I think I have it here. Uh, in this, so I'm sh at the same time showing the movie again. Random initial data, we do see, right, some double bubble that the, the interaction between one and two is too big, so they, they have to split. And uh, here, this is some result by Ru, Ren, and Wei. Notice that in certain parameter, you don't get your usual hexagon, right? Because you just end up in a rectangular lattice as opposed to a usual hexagonal lattice for minimizer of this problem. PDE is solving here. Sorry? <coughs> solving here. Yeah, exactly. So, so no, no, no. For Luo, Ren, and Wei, they are looking at the critical point of the... the simulation is which equation? It is the one that I... Um, the uh, non-localized <coughs> problem. The, uh, the Cantelian version with... The, so she's taking the, not the canyon here, she's taking literally what I looked at, the normal call, but she takes random initial data and take a gradient flow for that energy. So the local term, uh, perimetric with, uh, with the weight, and the uh, non-local term. She's uh, taking gradient flow for that with random initial data and end up with this. So, so then, uh, so this was single bubble. We're trying to see double bubble, and at some point, we were even hoping to see some other, other uh, minimizers. So, 
So to expect to get double bubble, we expect that the interaction between the two small phases should be small, yeah, so that they can stick together. And indeed, we're able to show that uh, uh, now we're trying to get exactly one double bubble, so your mass should not be too big, otherwise it will split again. So for a given parameter, there exists <coughs> an interaction term between phase one, between the two small phases, such that if you're smaller than it, Minimizer there is exists and exactly gives you one double bubble. Um, we are about to show also that uh, in the case where there's no interaction between the two small small phases, we're able to construct some particular minimizer. So we're able to give an, any quantity of any, any number k1, k2. I, we can find some mass. Uh, such that the minimizer has at least this given number of double bubble and uh, uh, leftover, in a sense, this given single bubbles. And, um, and we're also able to show that if there are single bubble, they must be uh, the same species as in this picture and the same mass, which is, uh, again, not, not obvious. So uh, and, and so basically, when there's coexistence of single and double bubble, all the single bubble of the same phase. So in a sense, uh, that happens when there's a, an excess of one phase compared to the other. That's when you get this picture. But um, that's what we're able to uh, show. So open lots of open questions. Um, is there some region in the parameter space of, of masses, given masses and interaction term, some uh, region where minimizer must be all double bubbles? We don't know. And as this is a movie where the interaction gamma 1, 2 is indeed zero. Uh, the surface tension is all equal in this case, the equal case with respect to the double bubble. And again, started so somehow just the, you know, the triple bubble, the, the bubble bubble in this picture. And I'm letting it run because I'm showing you again other unknown. We have no idea. So um, you see this continues moving. Those are all double bubbles. Notice, by the way, that they all have the same, again, proportion of uh, <coughs> the masses are the same. Red is the same red, and yellow is the same yellow. We cannot prove that uh, all the time. And uh, now suddenly notice at the end, they all have the same orientation. Uh, that, <coughs> no idea. This is probably third order gamma conversions, or I don't know where I'm from, maybe. Anyway, so this, uh, we have totally open. We don't know why we end up aligned this way. Angle. Okay, so as I and uh, and as I said, we cannot prove that the mass of one phase is always the same. So okay. now it's constantly rotating; it doesn't settle anymore. So at some point, it's it settles. It settles in some particular direction. Yeah. And it's starting again. Okay, you can see the movie again. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so you see there are some triple bubbles that disappear. There's some little, uh, and, uh, not only the aligned, but even the distance between them is all the same. <laughs> so, but you, can you say something? Are you saying that you don't know why they are all look the same, exactly with the same masses? Yeah, we don't know. You cannot say anything about that? No, no, because um, the perimeter problem is, is non-convex. We're just not able to get much information. OK, we've seen that a few times. Can I not see that this time? Zoom. Let's see, maybe I can. Yes, OK. Uh, but what about core shells, right? We've been looking at uh, double bubbles or, or single bubble. Um, no. We kind of would expect, because those are copolymer and they're attached at the A, B, and C, remember my picture, you would expect that between phase A and phase C, there should always be a phase B, really. They cannot just glue together, right? So um, 
notice that uh, if you finalize basically an A to C without passing by B, you know, they should always come together. Notice in this picture here, there's no, no buildings. So we thought maybe it would make sense to look at the degenerate case, which was not studied, right? They were always looking at the same equal surface tension, right? In which case, this is tricky, right? Uh, what about the really asking that the phase one, yes, wants to be between zero and two? So maybe it's more physically appropriate, so we started with you know, that. And <coughs> so this is uh, gamma one, two being zero, so they, they are happy to be together. And, um, and the sigma zero, two, right, is exactly two, exactly one plus one. <coughs> and we let it go, and uh, yes, uh, in that case, Minimizer, at least numerically, right, or core shells, they um, form this nice usual hexagonal pattern in that those choice of parameter. Yeah. That's what we uh, stop this. <laughs> That's the video. Um, and so. We already said that we expect we were able to. We discussed already the perimeter case. We know that in that case, sigma zero two is the degenerate case. We do expect some core shell. And I was telling you that um, uh, just looking at the perimeter, there is a degeneracy. Where should the center that? Can you notice in the picture? It was like right in the middle, right? So um, in order to de to determine this, it is. Uh, <coughs> the second order gamma image is the non-local term that is going because the perimeter doesn't see a difference wherever this yellow thing is. Is the non-local term that will um, handle this? So we are subtracting the first order term, so divide by the appropriate scaling, and um, this is the important term in the second order gamma image. It's the um, interaction, self-interaction term. You see all the Local term here. And so this, this problem here will be important. The proposition is in the case again of the degenerate. Um, if the interaction term between the two small phases is small enough, then uh, this term is minimized at concentric core shell. So we do expect, we do see concentric core shell if the interaction between one and two is sufficiently small compared to one one. But if uh, this interaction term is too big, it's, so again, right, the phase one and two, they don't want to be together. So how do they get rid of the problem of being together is to glue to the surface so that there's less interaction between one and two. They, they glue to the surface so they don't really are. So the minimum, in that case, the minimum um, is when the inner boundary is tangent, but obviously when gamma one two is too big, then they will have to come out, they will pull out of this uh, core shell and become single model. So that's the picture. Here we are um, increasing gamma one two here zero, and we are increasing the surface tension between zero and two. Uh, this was strictly less, so core shell. As we are increasing the surface tension, the, one of the phase, in this case the yellow phase, enters uh, into this other phase. And when you get to the degenerate case, it's exactly when the yellow phase is fully entered so that uh, there is this uh, um, so that is, you get exactly this, this, this as you expected. Well, here, what we are doing is continuing now, increasing the gamma one, two. See what happens. So we are in the degenerate case, but we are uh, increasing. So we are tangential here. But as gamma one, two increases, the, again, the two phases don't want to be together. And eventually, you end up with, as we had seen earlier, uh, single, single phase. So that finishes my talk. Oh, <laughs> yeah.